Life on the east end of Long Island revolves around water. The vast Atlantic Ocean rolls into the coastline here, providing work and pleasure to millions of people. Montauk, it's God's country. It's one of the best places in the world. And everybody went to the beach, living, you know, it was either the lakes or the ocean. Great way to grow up. That's why I'm out here now. There's a lot that's special about Long Island. The opportunities for outdoor recreation, particularly those that are centered around the water, are, are endless. It's a two, three hour trip from the city, but you feel like you're even further away than that. Well, we work on the water pretty much 365 days a year. I can't imagine being anywhere else now. Water gives life to Long Island, but pollution threatens coastal communities like this one. When it rains, harmful substances like fertilizers and pesticides from perfectly manicured lawns are washed into local waterways and eventually into the ocean. Natural vegetation and healthy soils can help filter out those contaminants, but an increase in man-made surfaces like rooftops, roads, and driveways is making the problem worse. Toxic algae blooms in Georgica and Fort Ponds have even forced closures during peak summer season to protect public health. There has never been a more important time to act. You already see it at South Lake over here even. If it rains, we can't take the kids there because of the runoff. The number one offender now in coastal areas is stormwater runoff. It's a serious, serious issue, and it's, it's one that average people can actually do something about. But this is it right here. This is a, a perfect example of stormwater runoff. It's a lot of water running. It's wild. I keep my mouth closed when I'm out there. <laughs> Here on the eastern end of Long Island, the water quality at our beaches is impaired by septic systems that don't properly treat our waste, as well as fertilizers that we use on our lawns that get into the local waterways. They over-fertilize the water, causing algae blooms to occur, which can lead to fish kills, it can lead to the release of toxins, that can harm human health, it can contaminate shellfish, and even make our pets sick. Very disheartening. Spider crabs. We call these poverty boxes. What is that? <laughs> Nothing in them. The Surfrider Foundation has two programs in place to protect clean water. The Blue Water Task Force, which measures bacteria levels in the water so people know when it's safe to swim, and the Ocean Friendly Gardens Program, which provides information on how you can make changes in your own yard to fight pollution. We're working with nature to protect it and to protect clean water rather than polluting it. We're in this ocean-friendly garden here in Meacox Bay. This garden is really soup to nuts designed to manage the storm water that comes off of this landscape. All the water wants to go to our surface waters, our bays and our estuaries. So what we need to do is be very aware of how our development is changing that hydrology in the landscape. And these ocean-friendly gardens are very effective in managing nutrients, pesticides, and absorb those into the biomass of the plant material. And <laughs> what I try to do is make it really beautiful. We've already had our perceptions 
either consciously or unconsciously changed to think that a monocultured lawn is good looking. Where, where, you know, if I look at it, I say it's probably not the healthiest for my grandchildren or my animals or me to be on because of the amount of chemicals I know went into making that look like that. Here what we did, we got a, a substantial amount of roof, as you can see, up above. We have a, a drip detail, so the water comes down and just drips down into this gutter. When we get a rainstorm, it comes right here. And we just built this sort of rock edifice here. And now we have the water passing through all of the natural vegetation. When it's raining, <laughs> you know, this thing's really active. On low flow and low rain events, by the, the water doesn't even reach the wetland as it passes through here. The soils are so absorbent that the water gets absorbed by the plants and by the soil itself as it makes its way through the water course. People come out here with their children to be in nature, and now they've got companies spraying pesticides all over their landscape. None of that happens here. Look how lush and beautiful the vegetation is. There's absolutely no chemical spraying here. We've done some damage and we need to roll it back. And the Ocean Friendly Garden program is all about like galvanizing people and saying, listen dude, let's take accountability for this place that we love so much. My whole youth, I learned to water ski and fish and to hike in the woods. And so the environment has always been important to me. I've seen, you know, the pristine forests of upstate New York suffer the ravages of acid rain. And out here on Long Island, we have an increasing problem with water quality. We all have an impact on that water, whether it's fresh water or salt water. Personally, I want to be able to enjoy this. I have children. It's up to all of us. It's individual choice. Ultimately, it comes down to individual choice. The connections that you have to the ocean, I think, when you, when you grow up in it, they're primordial. And uh, the only way I think that I can pass that on to my kids is to have them in it. We can all make a difference if we recognize the connection between our yards and gardens and the condition of our local waterways. We can all take steps to become more ocean friendly. Visit surfrider.org to learn how to support our efforts to protect clean water.